Morning again, dear saints. This is Vicar Dennis here with you. This is um, our uh, devotion for uh, the fourth week of Easter, fourth week after Easter, and this is Tuesday, Easter 4. Today we'll be reading uh, in Leviticus chapter 10 about the death of, of Aaron's, uh, two, of, two of uh, Aaron's sons, uh, Nadab and Abihu, and we'll, we'll uh, talk about that. Our psalm, so that's in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 10. Our psalm for today is uh, the first 10 verses of Psalm uh, 25. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Dear saints, God does not remember our sins. He does not take into account any of our sins, the sins of our youth, as the the psalmist talked about here today. But... And according, and according to his steadfast love, he does remember us. And he continues to be gracious to us. He continues to give us his good gifts. And what gifts are those? The gifts that we receive uh, here in word and sacrament. And we know that through, we hear that we see Jesus there in the sacrament. In, with, and under that, that bread and wine, there is Jesus for you and for me. Um, in the Word, of course, we, we, uh, we, we see Jesus. And in our baptisms, dear saints, we know that we are, we are connected, uh, connected to the cross, connected to Christ because of that, because of what he has done for us. Well, let's read about uh, uh, this um, event with Nadab and Abihu. Exodus chapter 10. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord has said. Among those who are near me, I will be sanctified, and before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, carry your brothers away from the front, front of the sanctuary and out of the camp. So they came near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithmar, his sons, Do not let the hair of your heads hang loose, And do not tear your clothes, lest you die, and wrath come upon all the congregation. But let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning that the Lord has kindled. And do not go outside the entrance of the tent of meeting, lest you die. 
For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine or strong drink, you or your sons with you, when you go into the tent of meeting, lest you die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. You are to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean. And you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his surviving sons. Take the grain offering that is left of the Lord's food offerings and eat it unleavened beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your due and your son's due from the Lord's food offerings, for so I am commanded. But the breast that is waved and the thigh that is contributed, you shall eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you. For they are given as your due and your sons do from the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the people of Israel. The thigh that is contributed and the breast that is waved they shall bring with the food offerings of the fat pieces to wave for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be yours and your sons with you as a due forever as the Lord has commanded. Now Moses diligently inquired about the goat of the sin offering and behold it was burned up. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the surviving sons of Aaron, saying, Why have you not eaten the sin offering in the place of the sanctuary, since it is a thing most holy and has been given to you, that you may bear the iniquity of the congregation to make atonement for them before the Lord? Behold, its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You certainly ought to have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. And Aaron said to Moses, Behold, Today they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and yet such things as these have happened to me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would the Lord have approved? And when Moses heard that, he approved. This is the word of the Lord. Well, seems strange, doesn't it, that here we have this account of these two sons of Aaron uh, that uh, it, it, we, get, we get what happened to them right here in the first few verses that they, they uh, put censers in their, uh, each took their censers and put fire in there and offered it before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And because of this, they paid, they paid with their lives. Now, I think it's important for us to remember that uh, God, a God of order, a God of discipline, uh, you know, that he had given specific commandments and told uh, through Moses how they were to carry out their duties. And this was something that, that was not commanded by him. It's, it's terrible. Uh, we, can, we, we see through this that Aaron certainly was, was grieving. And um, he even gets into some trouble because he doesn't, it, towards the end or so it seems, of the reading, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, uh, carry out with the sin offering he, he and his sons exactly as they're supposed to do but, but uh, Aaron tells Moses here at the end he says they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord and yet such things as these have happened to me if I had eaten the sin offering today would the Lord have approved and when Moses heard that he approved of his words and um, you know it was uh, um, that uh, we see we see even here in this reading today that God is showing His grace uh, even here to Moses or, or, or excuse me to Aaron and his other two sons. Um, after this had happened, Moses told them not to spend time mourning and not to go outside of the of the uh, <clears throat> of the tent of meeting. They were they had been anointed. They had been. Um, uh, and they were not to they were not to spend time mourning is what this is really talking about. Um, because when he says them to this, for example, do not let the hair of your heads hang loose, and do not tear your clothes lest you die, and wrath come upon all the congregation. Now this was a commandment that the, the priests were not to tear; they were not to tear their clothes. So jump forward here with me just for a moment, uh, dear saints, and think about uh, when Jesus was on trial 
that the high priest um, brought wrath upon himself uh, by tearing his clothes uh, in Jesus' trial as he, as he and others were accusing Jesus of, of blasphemy. <clears throat> when we read this, this is a reminder, and it, it tells us that uh, you know, to distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean. We are, he says, you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses. Dear saints, we, we come and we hear today just like we, uh, every, every day, and when we come in here on Sundays and we hear God's word proclaimed from that pulpit, uh, we, we hear his word and um, we're, what a wonderful gift that is that, that we hear preachers proclaim God's word to us and the hope that we have. Um, and we rejoice in that. And it's a reminder to us of, of, of uh, when, I, when I think about the commandments and how we are to, uh, uh, you know, honor the Lord's day. Um, keep, keep the day of the Lord holy. Well, whatever, what, what day is that for us? That's every day. Is it not every day of our lives? Um, you and I have been, have been cloaked, if you will. We've been clothed with, with a robe of righteousness because of what Jesus did for us. We, we are deemed, we are deemed clean. We, we can enter into God's presence as, as we do, um, because of, or I should rather say that Jesus is our high priest who is interceding for us. And because of that, and because of his atoning sacrifice for us, you and I have been covered by that blood. So the, the wrath, God's wrath is not falling upon us. Um, rather, his, his mercy and his grace uh, is poured out uh, because of what Jesus has done upon you and me. Yeah, it's a difficult kind of reading and uh, difficult, difficult passage. Uh, not an easy one to talk about, certainly, and to look at, but um, we know that we, th we thank God that we, so to speak, we, we have access to God. We have direct access to him because of what his son did for us. The, remember that the as, as we look at the clothes being torn, it also brings imagery to mind of the of the curtain being torn in two, and and into the curtain being torn in two uh, when Jesus died on the cross, um, and this is because now we we have access we ha we have access to the Father and the Holy Spirit dwells in you and dwells in me and um, we are. We are baptized saints of God and we belong to him and we have that assurance and that he continues to forgive us of our sins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would give us strength and guide us and direct us in all things and, and help us, O oh Lord, uh, in, our, in our frailty, in our weakness, because we know that we are sinners. And what this does for us is it shows us the great need that we have for you, for our Savior. It drives us back to you, O Lord, and it drives us back to our baptisms because it is there that we are, we are connected to your cross. Lord, we know that as we read Holy Scripture that you've forgiven us and you continue to forgive us, and we ask that you would continue to strengthen us in our days uh, as we continue to to live in a fallen world and, and to, to deal with all the, the sin and all the, the things that, that, um, <clears throat> that we, we deal with and we come up against daily. Oh Lord, may others uh, see the love of Jesus shining in us so that we may be that, that light on the hill and that beacon here uh, in this very dark place. In your name we pray. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, 
that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.